Hey, what is up everyone? I'm Gonex here and welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial here on the channel. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys about Path 3Ds in Godot. So you might be thinking to yourself, what is a Path 3D? Well, I am going to be getting into that. But basically, um, to basically explain it in the simplest way, it's basically a way to allow objects to follow a path very simply. So as you can see here, I've got a basic scene set up. I've just got a floor and a wall here. And I'm going to be doing a path around this wall today as an example. So if you do find this tutorial helps you out and you do learn something from it, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. And let's get right into it. So what I'm going to be doing first off is I'm going to be getting out of Path 3D. So I'm going to right click here, uh, add child node to my main scene. And then I'm going to search up Path 3D. So when you search up Path 3D, you should see this. And the description here says contains a curve 3D path for path follow 3D nodes to follow. So the path follow 3D node here, we will be making use of this. But first off, we're going to be getting out the path 3D node. So here we have our path 3D. Now, as you can see here, um, there is a variable called curve. And if we click on this here, it will then pull up a bunch of our properties to do with our path. So how do we make a path? Well, I'll be showing you guys. So what we're going to do first is I'm just going to position this path 3D right here to start off with. So this right here is going to be like the start of our path. So where it says points here, right, you want to click on this drop down and then where it says add element, you want to press this. And then this will create a new starting point for your path. So now if you go add element again, and then we move the position of this, as you can see, we now have a line being created here. And this line is telling us what way our path is going to go. So what I'm going to do for this path is I'm going to make it go forwards on the x-axis. So I'm going to change its position like that. And there we go. So what will happen is any node which is attached to the path follow 3D node, which I will show you guys how to use after this. Basically what will happen is it will follow along this path here in this direction. So now uh, in order to create another position, we just go add element again. And then we will uh, create a new position. So the next position will be over here. And there we go. And then I'm going to do another one once again. So I'm going to go add element once again. And then we're going to position this where I want it to be positioned. There we go. Alright, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another element, and uh, this should be our final one. Oh. At least I'm guessing it should be our final one, and boom! There we go. So then uh, just add a final element there, and then it should connect up to the start of our path again. So now, as you can see here, we have a path which is just continuous and it loops. So you guys can of course make your paths however you want to, I'm just making mine loop for this tutorial, but if you just want to make your path straight, or if you want to, you know, do some zigzags and, you know, make it more, you know, uh, constructive, then you can if you want to. But yeah, for this tutorial I'm going to be doing uh, just a square path like this. So now as you can see here, we actually have a thing here which says bake interval, and what this is used for is this is actually used to make our path more curvy. So if I set this to 1, for example, as you can see a bit more curve is added to the path. If we turn this up a bit more, even more curve is added. So if you want to add some curves to your path to make it so then your uh, AI isn't just, you know, uh, being very sharp when it's turning the corners, if you want to have it be more smoother, well you can do that if you want to. But to start off with, I am just going to set it back to its default value of 0 0.2, just so I can see show you guys how it looks at default, but yeah. So now that we have our path 3D set up, uh, what we're going to do is we're now going to add a path follow 3D. So we're going to go add child to the path 3D, and I'm going to add a path follow 3D node. So now as you can see here, we have a bunch of properties. We have progress, progress ratio, and then a bunch of other stuff here which I will get into. So what progress means is this is basically the uh, progress 
of which the path follow 3D node has made on the uh, on the path. So if I turn up this to five, for example, as you can see, the path follow 3D node moves up five meters on the progress of the path 3D. And as you can see here, the progress ratio has now gone up to 0 0.1 because that is the uh, ratio of which the path follow 3D node has gone up on the path. So if I set to like 0 0.5, for example, as you can see, this is halfway of the path. So now the path follow 3D node is halfway of the path. So yeah. And if you're wondering what the offset stuff has to do with, well, this basically just offsets your path follow 3D node. So if you don't want it to be exactly on the path, you can change it if you want to. So if you want to, you know, make your node higher or lower or, you know, more to the left or more to the right, you can do that if you want to. Or if you just want to have it following the node, I mean, the path, the path 3D node just completely as it is, well, then just have your offset set to zero. So now we have the rotation mode, so this basically uh, changes how our uh, path follow 3D node will rotate depending on which direction it's in. So if, if I actually turn on the local rotation mode here, and I change the progress uh, ratio of our path follow 3D node, as you can see, our path follow 3D node actually rotates depending on which direction it's in. So yeah, and you can change the ro uh, rotation mode if you want to, even if you don't want it to rotate at all. So it just stays as normal, you can do that if you want to, but uh, yeah. So now use model front, um, I've never uh, used this option before, but we'll read what it says. It says, if true, the node moves on the travel path with orienting the uh, plus Z axis as forward. So yeah. Um, this is a uh, thing which I don't use, but you guys can try this out if you want to, this option. And then we have cubic uh, interpolation. This is just something which I keep true because, you know, it's just uh, kept true by default. But if you guys want to play around with it and, you know, see what it does, you can. But um, as you can see here by the description, it says, If true, the position between the two cached points is interpolated cubically and linearly otherwise. So yeah, if you want to, uh, you know, play around with that option, you can. This is an option which I haven't played around for before, but yeah. So then we have the loop option, and what this determines is whether we want our uh, path 3D node, or our path follow 3D node, I mean, to loop or not. So with loop checked, as you can see here, if I move the progress, it continuously just loops and loops around continuously. However, if I turn loop off, and then I drag the progress, as you can see, when it gets to a certain point, which is back at the start here, uh, 48 meters in, um, it doesn't go anymore, so I can't actually continue to drag the progress bar, but then if I check loop, I can just continue to drag it around and around and around. So yeah, it basically determines whether our, uh, our actual path follow 3D uh, will actually loop or not, so that's what this is for. And then tilt enable, this is an option, this is an, an option which I've played with before, but um, it says if true, the tilt property of uh, curve 3D takes effect. Um, I'm not exactly too sure what this does. If you guys want to play around with this option, you can. But uh, yeah. So anyways, uh, now that we know the basics of the Path Follow 3D, um, I'm going to show you guys how to do some coding for it in a bit. So then you guys can have, like, you know, in your game, you can, you can have an object which is continuously following along a path. And uh, yeah. So with our path follow 3D, what I'm going to do first off before we do get into the scripting is I'm going to add a child node to it, and this is going to be a mesh instance 3D. And this is going to represent the object which is following the path follow 3D. If you guys want to have like a character model or something like that, like if you want if you want to have a character following a path, you can totally do that if you want to. But just for this tutorial, I'm going to be using a capsule. And so then we can see the capsule better amongst the white wall here. I am going to give it a different material. So I'm just going to do that quickly. We'll make it... Um, what will make it stand out? I think blue. Yeah, we'll use blue. This will make it stand out a bit. And there we go. So now, as you can see here, um, if I change the progress ratio or the progress of the path follow 3D, as you can see, this mesh instance is now following along with it. And boom. So as you can see, this mesh instance is now following along with the path follow 3D. So what I will do as well is I'm um, on my path 3D, I will set the bank the the bank interval, I was about to say, the bake interval to something like five. 
so then we can see how it actually curves around. So if I change the progress ratio now, as you can see, the path follow 3D is a lot more smoother when going around because it's following the actual smooth curve and it even rotates more smoothly as well as you can see here too if you're paying attention to the arrows. So as you can see it uh, rotates a lot more smoother, it moves around a lot more smoother. So if you want to have your, um, your, your path follow 3D follow around the path more smoother and not very sharply like it was before, well then yeah, uh, you can change the bake interval amount. So now what I'm going to do here, now that we've got this set up, is I'm going to actually create a script. So on my path follow 3D node here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on where it says script empty, I'm going to create a new script. And I'm going to actually create a new scripts folder, since I don't have a scripts folder yet. So I'm going to go create folder, scripts. There we go. And I'm going to call this script something like um, path follow or something like that just as an example go create and boom so now what i'm going to do is in the process function what we're going to do here is we're just going to go progress plus equals and then you can enter any amount you want to here whether you want it to be one or two or three or whatever you want it to be i'm just going to enter in a six as an example and then you want to multiply it by delta, so then at no matter what frame rate your game is at, it will always go at the same speed. So yeah, so that's what delta is used for. It It keeps everything at the same speed depending on what the frame rate is, so yeah. So what this is doing here, this basic line of code, is it's basically making our progress go up by 6 times by delta. So basically it's just making our progress of our path follow 3D go up and it will make our path follow 3D follow the path 3D. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to test this out and what I've got here is I've actually got a camera in this basic scene here. So then we can actually uh, see how it all goes. So uh, yeah, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the scene. We're going to test it out and see if it all works. Oh, wait a second. There's something I forgot to do. I forgot to add lighting. Um, yeah, I need to add lighting to the scene first off, so let's do that. I'm going to add an environment, and I'm, then I'm going to add a directional light 3D. There we go. And then I'm just going to rotate this. We'll add some shadows as well just to make it look nice, and there we go. So now if we test it out... Oops, wait no. So now if we test it out... Boom! As you can see... We now have our path follow 3D following along our path 3D. So yeah. So anyways guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something from it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff to play around with the path 3D node uh, if you want to, so be sure to go try it out if you like, if it's good for your game and what you're trying to do. So what the path 3D node could be useful for is, let's say for example, you might have pedestrians on a street. Uh, usually what I like to do for that is I just like to use proper AI for that. But if you just want to do like a path uh, 3D node, you know, well, you can do that if you want to. If you just want your, your pedestrians to just follow along a path and uh, not be interrupted at all, you can totally do that. Or you can use it for other purposes, such as for conveyor belts, if you want your uh, objects to be on a conveyor belt and moving along a conveyor belt, the Path 3D node can be great for that too. So yeah, there's a bunch of things to use it for, and hopefully you all did find use out of this tutorial. Also, just before I do end this tutorial as well, um, I literally just said uh, goodbye and ended the tutorial before, but I thought I'd record an extra bit because there's something I forgot to explain, and that is tilting. So what is tilting, you might be thinking? Well, basically, um, if we go to our Path 3D node here, uh, as you can see, um, our Path Follow 3D is actually uh, curved right now, uh, and that's because we actually changed the tilt value. So what the tilt value does is it allows our paths to actually tilt if we want them to. So if you want, like, let's say for example, you might have like a road or something which is tilted to its, uh, to its right or its left a bit, you know, like it's on a bit of an angle, like a 20 degree angle or something like that, then you could actually do the tilt option. So then your path follow 3D nodes will then tilt along with it. So if you want to do that, you can. So as you can see here, my path follow 3D is tilting here, but then it straightens up because the tilt isn't enabled on these other points, it's just enabled on this point, so yeah. 
So I will actually uh, change it up with a few other things as well. So I'm actually going to tilt it all the way around like this, for example. Um, yeah, I'm just going to play around this just to show you guys. And then we'll go to our Path Follow 3D. And now as you can see here, our Path Follow 3D is spinning around more. And then it starts to fix itself up towards the, the end here because it's no longer needing to tilt because the tilt isn't on these uh, other uh, points in the path. So yeah. So as you can see, it basically uh, rotates depending on where there's tilt. And um, there's actually a uh, option here called, um, wait, is it on the Path Follow 3D? Yeah, it is. There's an option here called Tilt Enabled if we turn this off then our uh, mesh instance or our Path Follow 3D will no longer tilt. So if you don't want it to tilt for some reason, you can change it if you want to, but yeah. I want to actually see what this looks like when uh, testing it out here, but yeah, as you can see, here is our actual uh, Path Follow 3D now, tilting along. And uh, yeah. So if you did enjoy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.